All right, guys, this is part four of the series. At this point in time, if you've been watching all my videos in order, then you already have all the components you need. You should have already gone down to the tackle shop and you should have all the different pieces of gear that you need to put together the ultimate fishing rig for trout. And if you haven't, then you better go back and watch those videos because I talk about everything for the beginner. I talk about what kind of rod and reel and line you gotta pick. I talk about what kind of hooks, what kind of sinkers, what kind of beads, what kind of bait to get in my third video. I talk about all that stuff. So you gotta go down, check those videos out because we're going over today how to tie everything together and to form the Carolina rig. But before I show you how to put everything together, what we gotta do right now is learn how to tie knots because if you don't know how to tie knots, then you can't go fish. So the knot that I'm gonna teach you guys how to tie is possibly the most simple knot to tie that exists. But in, in spite of it being so simple, it's actually a very strong knot. And the reason, and I actually use this knot to tie my Carolina rig together. I don't use any other knot on the Carolina rig to assemble it. It's the same knot on every component. And it's very simple, very strong. You know, if, you th if you're fishing and your line gets snagged up and you can't get the snag free, and so you have no choice but to cut the line, you don't wanna be out there fiddling around with the line, you know, oh, spending 15, 20 minutes trying, oh, I gotta tie this knot, I forget how it goes, it's so complicated. You want something simple. You want something fast that you can tie up and you can throw back out onto the water. You want something that gets you back fishing with your bait in the water where fish can see it. And this knot that I'm about to teach you right now, the clinch knot, is perfect for that. Simple and strong. Okay, so obviously when you're starting to tie this thing, make sure you have your hook and then your line <clears throat> right here. And all you gotta do is take that line and pass it through the eye of the hook. So now you have this, right? You just pass it through, that's pretty simple. Now, you want this tag end here part to be a little longer, especially for when you're first starting out, and just double this back over here. I'm gonna show you guys in a bit. So eventually, you just have this. You can see that better. So you have your hook right here, and then you're pinching it shut right here. And then the tag end is, is over here. Let me show you. All right, your tag end is right here. So that's all you got. It's nothing complicated, guys. Just passing it through, doubling it back, and then that's all you got. Now, what you wanna do is you wanna take this part with the hook, this hand with the hook, and you want to just twist it seven times, seven to eight times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so you're gonna see like this part's kind of, it's got those twists in there that were made when you know you, you, you twisted the hook, and then there's this hole right here, right? You see that hole? Well, you're, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take this tag end right here, this tag end right here, and then you're gonna pass that through, through that loop right there. So you just wanna take that, pass it through the loop, and then you wanna pull this right here. Now before you finish, before you tighten down all the way, this is monofilament line, okay? Monofilament line, if you pull down and you just do it without lubricating it, without spitting on it, that'll cause friction, which causes heat, which means that the strength of your knot will decrease because monofilament line is not, is very heat sensitive. So you wanna make sure you lubricate it up, just you know, spit on it real quick or put your mouth on it. And then I did it off camera, but you know, just tighten it up, but just spit on it and then tighten that bad boy up. Pull on it real good on both sides, just like this. You know, then pull on the main line part, tighten that guy up. Pull on the tag end part, tighten him up. 
And then at the end, you get this kind of like nice looking little, you get this nice little look on top. Focus. Focus. So you can see, I don't know if you can see at the very top right there, you see those little, uh, those little lines on the top of the hook right there. That's how you know you did it right, okay? That's how you know you tied yourself a good, strong knot that won't come off when you're catching that big trout, guys. So anyway, you got this right here. Then you want to trim the tag end off. And uh, I'm at home and nail clippers work really, work really well for that. Just trim it off. Don't, don't trim off too much. Leave a little bit on there. And boom, that's how you tie the clinch knot. Very simple. All right, guys, we're going to get ready and go ahead and start tying the Carolina rig. And let's go over the components that you're going to need that I told you to get at the tackle shop. And you can see that right here. We got our suspects. We got the half ounce egg sinker. We got the glass bead. We got the barrel swivel. And then we have our leader. This is just that knot that I showed you guys how to tie earlier. And I just trimmed off about, you know, I think about 16 to 18 inches off the main line. So that's our leader right there. We're going to use that in a bit. But anyway, this is really simple, guys. That's why I'm teaching it to you. And not only is it really simple, but you know it catches fish because this is the only rig that I use. And it's caught me a lot of fish. It's done really well for me. So we're going to get started, right? All you got is your main line right here. Here's my rod. Here's my main line. Here's the line coming off of it. Take your egg sinker. Take your egg sinker and thread that on to your main line. Just like so. All right, boom. Step one complete. Now, take your glass bead. Thread that on as well. Boom. Just like so. You got this little, you know, your egg sinker sliding along with the glass bead. Now take that barrel swivel right here. Take this barrel swivel and tie the clinch knot onto it. All right? So I'm just gonna tie that, my clinch knot on real quick. Now we're gonna trim that tag end off just like that. And boom, we got the first part of the Carolina rig completed, just like that. That's the first part, the first half of it. That's all you need. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our leader here, the one that we tied, that I showed you how to tie in the previous, you know, how to tie the clinch knot, and all we're gonna do is we're gonna tie this leader onto the barrel swivel. And once again, that's super easy. Just, it's just a clinch knot, guys, real quick. You know, you're gonna be in and out, tying up, rigging up out there on the lake, you're going to be good to go in no time. Because you got to get out there, you got to catch yourself fish. You know, I'm just turning this thing and twisting it up and passing it through the, the hole there, then wetting it, and then boom. You got yourself, and then we're going to clip the tag end off right here, and boom. You got yourself a Carolina rig all ready to go and catch yourself some fish. And that's it, guys. That's all you got to do to catch those trout with this Carolina rig. Obviously, you know, you're going to want to put some kind of bait on there. Let me get my bait real quick. You guys already know what it is. I don't use any of that power bait dough. I use the good stuff. I use the stuff that actually catches fish. I don't use any power bait dough. I use the mouse tails. So make sure you get yourself some of these and get yourself a few colors. Get yourself some of these. Rig this bad boy on there. The bubble gum white today, guys. Rig that on there. And let me show you guys how I like to rig it up in the water so it has that nice smooth action 
that the fish just can't resist. So you take the head right here, right? He's got that head. You want to pass that thing, let me see, right underneath the bottom. You see that? Right underneath the bottom of its head. Okay? Like so. Then you want to shove it through so it pops out the head. Just like that. I see that. So you see how it's kind of uh, like the top head, the top part right there, it's been cut clean in half, right? Just like that. Boom. So when you're hanging out in the water, you know, this thing's out there floating, it'll float like this with its tail just moving in the water and the fish are gonna, they just can't help but bite on that thing and they're gonna smack this thing so hard. You're gonna be like, oh my Lord, is this a bass? But nope, it's just gonna be a trout that sees this thing moving in the water and it's gonna smack it and you're gonna have yourself a nice trout dinner. Like I said, I think the big ones like to bite on these mouse tails. The smaller ones like to bite. If you wanna play a numbers game, guys, go for you know the power bait. I'm sure the power bait works. Right? That's why some people buy it, but I don't think it's gonna catch you as big of a, of a trout consistently than if you use these mouse tails. So remember to like this video, subscribe and comment, and I'll see you guys next time. There's no Wi-Fi. <laughs> <laughs> I need <to> <laughs>